from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. I'm so glad you're here. You're part of the Power Nation. Here we help you with your attitude, your relationships, your finances, and your career. And one thing I teach people in seminars all over the world about attitude is to use one word when people ask you, how's business, how's life? Use it with enthusiasm. Unbelievable. Nobody will know what you're up to, but they'll think you're doing great. Attitude is everything. This is episode number 142 of Boaz Power TV, and I call this one, A Wonderful Theory of Relatives. At a seminar I conducted in uh, Chico, California back in 2004, I met a very interesting gentleman named John Strissauer. I guess my background, father from Austria, mother from Poland, along with numerous relatives perishing in the Holocaust, resonated strongly with John because of his background. As John communicated with me about uh, after the event, I was fascinated by his story and felt it would be of value to share it with you. Thus, I'll let him tell it. I believe you'll notice a wonderful pattern of respect and admiration through John's words as he talks about his parents and grandparents. And I quote, my father, Edward Hermann Strissauer, MD, a doctor, was born and raised in a wealthy Austrian family with a typically strong educational experience, the only son of two doctors. His father, Rudolf Strissauer, also a doctor, was a well-known and respected cardiologist. His mother, Hannah, was a very well-educated woman, especially for the times, and was a psychiatrist. She spoke 13 languages and regularly spent time with those less fortunate than herself, able to help because she spoke their language. I just realized my mother from Poland, she spoke seven languages, incredible. He continues, my grandfather, Rudolf, a prominent cardiologist, was imprisoned by Hitler as a Jew. At some point, one of the top-ranking members of his command required serious attention for heart problems, and Rudolf was enlisted to assist. I have a collection of medals awarded to Rudolf for his service during World War I. As a medical officer, he traveled great distances by foot and helped people along the way. My father, John says, at age 16, was somehow allowed to leave Austria for America in 1939 with a swastika in his passport. Later, my grandmother Hannah left during, due to the Holocaust. Both were able to leave alive, but with no possessions. Hitler had confiscate, confiscated all their belongings. Leaving Europe on the Queen Mary, my father's passport, which I still have, had an SS stamp in it. That indicated a high-level Nazi authorization to leave the country. Dad emigrated through Ellis Island, and his first job in America was delivering fashionable hats to the well-to-do ladies of Manhattan. He also worked for his uncle, Leo Weitz, who ran a rare book distribution and bindery business. I recently had dinner with Leo's son, Herbert Weitz, who has made Weitz, Weitz and Coleman into one of the last true old world book binderies. His work is in the hands of the elite, wealthy and royal all over the globe. My grandmother, Hannah Strissauer, MD, a doctor, was born in Poland in 1886. She was eventually given passage to America in 1944 to Ellis Island via Palestine in order to practice psychiatry at the Rockland Mental Institution in New York. She falsified documents to conceal her true age. In order to start over in America, grandmother struggled into the U.S. Uh, smuggled rather into the U.S. a very valuable postage stamp with a famous inverted airplane. Its value was in the fact that the upside down airplane was a printing error. This remarkable woman played ping pong with us, lived by herself, and told stories about seeing cars, radio, TV, the telephone, space flight, and many other things come into being during her lifetime. Father spoke French, German, Italian, and English, and worked his way through college teaching French and German. He was studious and dedicated and earned a BS in math, an MS in biochemistry, a PhD in fluid dynamics, and an MD from New York City College, USC, UC Berkeley, and UCSF medical schools, respectively. He was a research cardiologist while carrying 120% of a full patient load. 
Wow, what some people accomplish. Dad worked hard and enjoyed his work. He was responsible in part for such developments as the 81 milligram aspirin that helps prevent a second heart attack. He also helped discover that certain foods lead to heart failure. In addition, he formulated much of the current understanding of cholesterol, blood chemistry, and HDL-LDL ratios, the so-called good versus bad cholesterol. What a doctor, what a mind. He was my father and a great human who retired at 70. Dad was an active tennis player and a pilot, beating competitors 50 years old and flying his own plane until his death. Dad met my mother, Beverly, when they were fellow chemists at Filtrol, an early petrochemical research company, which was later bought by Standard Oil. The company ultimately became Chevron Texaco. My mother was also a scientist. We call her the Encyclopedia because this unassuming and wonderful soul was well-educated and well-read and offered to help anyone with anything at any time. Her breadth of knowledge was very impressive and she was skilled in a number of fields. As an energy specialist, a pilot, a photographer, both on the ground and in the air, an information specialist, a geologist, and a genealogist, Mother was very conversant and quite interesting. She was warm, caring, nurturing, and as John says, my mother. My parents celebrated their 50th anniversary a few years before dad died. Mother passed away in her sleep in April of 2003 at almost 80 years of age. I have two brothers, both technology people working for Microsoft and one sister who's a social worker helping with foster family placements. I have two older daughters, Jessica 12 at the time and Jennifer 14 at the time from my first marriage. Jessica is recovering from a double lung transplant. I have a wonderful, bright and beautiful wife, Lisa, who is doing an excellent job raising our beautiful and intelligent youngsters, Hannah and Logan, four and one respectively. As I said, I like the wonderful thread of respect that John weaves through the story of his family. This story all go, also goes to show what people can do, no matter how difficult the beginning when they focus their minds in productive directions. So, the affirmation for this episode of Boaz Power TV, it's an affirmation of respect. You might want to write it down. I choose to respect and admire positive people who have overcome obstacles and achieved great things. Let me repeat that for you. I choose, you may want to read this morning and evening for 21 days. I choose to respect and admire positive people who have overcome obstacles and achieved great things. Thank you for joining me. If you like these messages and people worldwide like them very much, please do me a favor, forward this to five people you know. Suggest to go to my website, boazpower.com, where they can also subscribe to the free weekly broadcast of Boaz Power TV. And perhaps we can help them to also overcome some obstacles and achieve great things. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.